The Verge passes along a Financial Times report that Apple and Samsung are working with the GSM Association to develop a new SIM card standard to make it easier to switch between services from your phone. The embedded SIM or eSIM would stay in the phone, let you switch your carrier without getting a new card. You wouldn't need dual SIMs anymore. Uh, now, work on the agreement is still in progress. The GSM Association says they are positive about developments, but no agreement has been reached. They do want to create a new standard of some kind by 2016. When you read this article, doesn't it make you realize that later on we're going to look back and go, why did we have SIM cards? Yeah. No, what, it's what gonna, was the purpose of that? Ab absolutely. Uh, it's going to be like, well, I almost said like the cable box, but we used to have an, uh, an extra box to change channels. It was a switch box when we first got cable in the yeah. 80s. And I was like, why did they do that? Why didn't they just broadcast them to the tuner or whatever? Uh, I, I do think that, yes, someday it'll just make sense that well, you would do this in software. Like the only reason to have a SIM card is to control you and stop you from switching between right. providers. Right, right, right. No other, no other objective at all. And I can't wait for the email that tells me why you need a SIM card other than that, because I'm sure there are <laughs> other reasons. I should never say only, but really, it was the 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 main impulse behind. It. At least you're good to know that the uh, internet will correct you, Tom. Yeah, right. It's it, it, as an organism, the internet is always right. <laughs> There you go. Well, the Wall Street Journal reports Facebook's Oculus VR has agreed to buy Israel-based gesture control company Pebbles. Hand and finger gesture control made by Pebbles was recently integrated into the Oculus. Pebbles system lets users see their own arms and hands in their VR display, even including, including clothing and scars. Yeah, I mean, the acquisition just makes sense. They've already put this in the Oculus. Why wouldn't you want to involve these people as your engineers to keep developing it? Uh, it's less about Facebook. It's all about Oculus VR. And really interesting that unlike other attempts at this, which just kind of show generic arms, they can show you your particular arm with your clothes, your scars. Even if you hold something in your hand, a lot of times they can have that thing represented in the virtual world. I think it's going to make it actually a little less freaky, though. I got to play with Oculus Rift at a friend of mine's house. He has the second version of the developer kit. And the thing that freaked me out the most was when I looked down and moved my arms and they weren't moving. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or they so weren't there at moving, all. In yeah. Some cases, yeah. yeah. Or actually when a little kid bumped into me in the real world and I went, ah, because I couldn't see her and Where I couldn't see my arms. Where did they come from? Venture Beat reports eBay has confirmed that it's selling its enterprise services business, eBay Enterprise, for 900 $25 million. Uh, that's about $1.5 million less than what they paid for it when they acquired GSI Commerce in 2011, which they turned into eBay Enterprise. eBay Enterprise does e-commerce sites for retailers. The buyer is a consortium consisting of investment companies. eBay officially spins out PayPal as a separate company tomorrow, Friday. PayPal begins trading on the NASDAQ on Monday, so they have essentially spun out everything but their core marketplace, and they just had their earnings. eBay revenue rose 7% last quarter with PayPal and Enterprise on board. Although if you take PayPal and Enterprise out, the core marketplace had its revenue fall. They say due to currency fluctuations, but the core marketplace needs a boost. Uh, basically, eBay's been making most of their money through PayPal. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm hopeful to see that maybe PayPal on its own can get a little bit more innovative into a lot of the mobile space stuff. Because PayPal had the opportunity to kind of own the mobile payments uh, industry, and yet they haven't really done anything great. You've got Apple Pay and Google Pay out there, and, and it just sort of seems like PayPal has been just treading water a little bit. Maybe they can get a little more inventive now. Wow, Roman in the chat room is already correcting me, saying it's not just the SIM that prevents you from switching carriers. Yes, I know. <laughs> I was just saying having the SIM cards makes Allows. it harder to switch. <laughs> So if you pull it, he's like, it could actually make it harder, just more lock-in if you have the software, which is true, too. So oh, good. Immediate correction. Anyway, yes, uh, you're right uh, about PayPal. I've, I, have, I have high hopes for what they could do independently. Yeah. TechCrunch reports wearable maker Misfit has launched a new app today called Misfit Link that lets you use your Misfit activity tracker as a smart button. So, uh, for instance, you click your tracker and your phone's camera activates. The app works with the Misfit, Misfit Flash and a new cheaper Misfit Flash Link, essentially a flash without a wristband. The Link's iOS app is available now with Android coming next month. It will also add integrations with IFTTT or IFTT. The three times. And Logitech Harmony remotes over time. Misfit also lowered prices for its existing trackers. I tell you, Tom, I went over to their site and I read and read and looked 
connect, and, and I can't figure out what that flash link thing is because there's flash, and there's link, and then there's flash link, well, there's, and I can't figure out what it is. There's, there's three things. Uh, the flash is the wristband. Uh, and it's a plastic wristband. There's also the Shine, which is aluminum. The Shine doesn't work with the Link app, by the way. So there's the Flash with the wristband. The Flash Link is basically just the Flash without the wristband. And then you have the Link app. And what the Link app does is allow you to program it to say, hey, when you tap on your Flash, whether it's the Link or, or just the regular Flash, do this, do this thing. And that's why it, it'll eventually integrate with Ift, because that's exactly what Ift does. It creates associations. So you could say, you know, turn on the lights in my home when I tap it, or, uh, you know, have my phone take a, a picture uh, when I tap it. So it's, but if you look it's, at, it's if just you look an app flash, and two devices. But if you look at the Flash page on Misfit site, it has a wristband version and a clip version, yeah. both under Flash. No, they're just just showing, f- they're, they're showing the flash without on. the wristband so that you know you can replace wristbands. But then the flash link is just basically the flash sold without the wristband. So is a flash link all by itself, is it a fitness tracker? Yeah, it just doesn't is it have just a wristband. A switch? Yeah, you just keep it in your pocket, I guess. They both have the switch, the flash and the flash link. Okay. I don't get it. But hey, it's only 20 bucks. There was a see, no, We used the TechCrunch story because the PC World article had a mistake in it and said there was no LEDs on the Flash Link. And I know that confused you at first as well because there are LEDs on both of them. Right. That confused me too. I have no idea what this thing is. Okay. It's just a fitness tracker that has an app that lets you program it to do a single thing when you tap it. As That's well fun. as doing the normal fitness tracker things that it always would do. For only 20 bucks. Yeah. Selfies. Without the wristband. Yeah, it's plastic. Uh, okay, uh, we got another one for you. See, see if this one makes more sense. Uh, far from being just a button, The Verge notes that the Move, M-O-O-V, has announced a newly designed version of its AI fitness tracker coach called Move Now. Sounds like a command. It's smaller than the original Move, has a more breathable wrist strap and a replaceable battery. It also allegedly improves on Move's coaching features with new apps that are specifically for running, swimming, cycling, boxing, and timed workouts. The AI talks to you throughout the workout. That's the AI coaching part of it, encouraging you, giving you tips, uh, telling you like, oh, if you want to hit your pace, you need to pick up uh, your pace, etc. Pre-orders start today at $59 with a jump in price to $99 when it ships this autumn. You know, the uh, the Verge article that you linked to really made me like this because they, they spoke to one of the problems is a lot of these fitness trackers collect data. My iPhone, man, it's collecting data, and it's putting it on my phone, and I got a lot of data, but it doesn't tell me what it means. And they're saying that the AI uh, fitness tracker software from Move is actually going to give you some information about it, like, hey, you did this before, maybe you want to try this. You're not doing this enough, you should try doing that. And and I think that's one of the problems with a lot of these trackers is they give you data, but they don't tell you what to do about it. Um, I'm real curious. I don't know whether that one does sleep tracking, but I've got a real pet peeve yeah, about. I've got a big pet peeve about sleep tracking. It does. It, it, the sleep trackers track your data. And then what do you do about it? It doesn't have you track why you didn't sleep. So it doesn't track well, like alcohol or caffeine or reading or watching TV. Thing, I don't think that the science is enough to really definitively say why yeah. you didn't sleep. So right. uh, yeah, it, it's, it's interesting to know whether you slept or not because then you could say, oh, well, no wonder I feel tired. I obviously <laughs> didn't sleep very well. But then, yeah, beyond that... Because you would never figure that out on your own if you didn't have a device telling you. Well, sometimes I feel like I slept through the night, but I'm still tired. So this could confirm or deny whether it was that or whether... give you nothing to do about it, right? Yeah, that's just, (laughs) you know, little bits of knowledge. Eventually, we might find a solution. There you go. Well, The Verge reports Motorola has invited the press to a live stream event on July 28th at 9 a.m. Eastern. The text reads, your relationship status is about to change. X-O-X Moto. Although the O could also be a G as in the Moto G. Which it probably is. I forgot about Motorola. Yeah, they're Lenovo's company. Remember? They make phones. Yeah. 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 Uh, so it, it, there's, there's a lot of money in that. A bunch of Droid leaks, a bunch of Moto X leaks, but Moto G leak. I mean, it's going to be new phones. And my guess is, based on this invite, that they're going to try to talk about them as social networking devices to help you with your relationships or something. Okay. <clears throat> Ars Technica reports that Intel will build a third generation of 14 nanometer processors, delaying 
the switch to 10 nanometers to the second half of 2017. That sound you're not hearing is Intel missing a beat in Moore's Law. We should be having a talk, I think, and we're not. We're just getting another tick. Or I may have that reversed. Intel CEO Brian Kurzanich confirmed the delay in an investor call. Skylake will follow Broadwell later this year, but then be followed by KB Lake in 2016 instead of Cannon Lake, which is now pushed to the second half of 2017. They still intend to switch to 10 nanometers after that. Kurzanich said also that the more regular two-year process time frame is still their long-term desire. So they haven't given up on Moore's Law yet. So this doesn't necessarily mean that Moore's Law is wrong. This just means that Intel is not obeying the law. You know what? Moore's Law is just a nice little fiction. <laughs> Everybody gets we're so excited. What is actually Moore's Law? What did Moore actually say? And does this violate Moore's Law? You know what? None of that really matters. <laughs> what you just said is the only real important thing, which is, wow, Intel just had a delay with their 10, with their 14, <laughs> with their 10 nanometer process because 14 nanometers was harder to roll out than they thought, and it looks like 10 nanometers might be harder to roll out than they thought. So these chip advances may be slowing down. I mean, that's the real takeaway here, right? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say they disobeyed the law. <laughs> I know. That's what everybody wants, right? That everybody wants to like get all hung up on like did more. We should prosecute. Is this it? And and yeah, I think we should. I think we should take Ryan Grzanich <laughs> before the tr tribune. Oh, you know what though? But we hold all of our court on the internet with Reddit and they're in trouble right now. So uh, we really can't pull them in front of the court of public opinion do? right at this moment. <laughs> I like it. Well, and Gadget passes along that Samsung announced it has begun testing Samsung Pay for select owners of the Galaxy S6 and 6, uh, S6 Plus in Korea. Samsung Pay combines NFC with the Loop Pay technology for simulating a magnetic stripe. Now, do we know much about uh, Samsung Pay? Other, like, is there a secure enclave on the phone like there is on the iPhone, yeah. or is it cloud-based? They announced it. They announced it when they announced it the last time. They said that they would be it would be isolated, an isolated process, and all of that. Uh, and this is just our first look at it in the real world. This we've been waiting for them to roll it out. We thought it might come with the new Galaxy, and it didn't. Uh, so people were a little uh, surprised about that. But now it it looks like they finally are getting out. With the big conversation we had on DTNS about this when they announced Samsung Pay was was less about the security part of it, which a lot of people are looking at and paying close attention, and you should listen to those people if they come up with something wrong with it, but more about the the race for adoption, which is to say, you know, Apple Pay's slow adoption is partly because you have to find a retailer that takes it. What Loop Pay does for Samsung is gets around that and says anybody that ha takes a magnetic card reader can use our system but they're taking so long to get it out. It the magnetic stripes matter. are going to be gone. Yeah. NFC chips will be there. Well, the, the reason I was asking about that was because at Mobile World Congress, um, Infineon was saying that, that their chips allow you to store that data in the cloud or locally. And that's why I was curious whether they had uh, come through with any more information on that. But, yeah, the magnetic stripes are going away. All the terminals are going to be NFC anyway, and they may or may not take Apple Pay. Just because they have NFC doesn't mean they'll take it, as we've discussed at length. All right. Our next story begins. Xiaomi introduced two new non-cell phone products, according to CNET. The new 48-inch Mi TV 2S Smart TV sports a slim 9.9 millimeter aluminum frame, 60 frame per second Samsung 4K panel, and runs the MIUI TV interface. All for 2,099 999 yuan. That's about 480 dollars US. In China, starting July 28th, the other product announced was the Mi Water Purifier, selling for 12.99 yuan. That's about 210 bucks US. Capable of cleaning up to 76 barrels of water a day, and available at the Xiaomi website in China soon. Uh, and all their stuff in China is sold over the web. So, it it is it, the TV is not that big of a surprise. 48 inch TV. 4K panel, their first 4K TV. That's interesting. Uh, the expansion into, they've done an air purifier. Now they're doing a water purifier. Very important product in certain places in China. So that I think they're making a good bet there. Uh, you don't see a whole lot of companies out there doing that kind of diversification. You don't see Apple coming out with air purifiers. No, Samsung though, right? Samsung makes everything. You know what's sad about this announcement is that I didn't get excited about the TV. I figured for you and me living in Southern California that it was the water purifier we might actually need. 
Right. Well, there's <laughs> kind of the same reason. There's some as, sewer as, runoff as, down the yeah. street at this park, and I'm thinking. <laughs> I mean, air purifier and water purifier, Beijing, Los Angeles, it's, it's Might be uh, not that far apart. Our and, air is pretty good now. Now, Xiaomi is, it's better than Beijing's, I'll, I'll, I'll grant you that. Better uh, it was. Xiaomi is not rolling these products outside of China for now, but you think a water purifier might actually oh, yeah. A good one to roll out in, in in other places, not even just here, but you know, India, South America, Africa. Sure. Uh, so a, a good worldwide product as well. Yeah, I wonder if that's a lot of money or small money for water purifiers. It seems purifiers, yeah. from what I have read from the people who follow this market more closely that this amount is on the high side, but probably worth it. Okay. All right, cool. Well, Gadget reports that Yola has found its first Sailfish OS licensing partner, India's second largest phone maker, Intex Technologies, will sell Sailfish-powered phones and help develop a regional mo mobile ecosystem called Sailfish India. Index, uh, Intex will release self Sailfish phones in India in late 2015, possibly along with Sailfish 2.0. Yeah, uh, Sailfish 2.0 coming to the tablet first, but it might come to these phones. In the the Engadget article had a video made by the Yola people uh, all talk about sailfish, and I found it so bizarre that a phone made by uh, an Indian Indian company, Indian OS, being sold in India, and they had a white woman <laughs> doing the ad all through know. it. You know, I mean, not that she couldn't be Indian, but it just seemed like a real weird marketing thing. And then they, they're talking about how this is a new OS, but they emphasize the fact, hey, it runs Android apps. Yeah, and that's Yay. that's the challenge for any of these operating systems is to be differentiated but also acceptable for the people who are like, yeah, but I've got a bunch of Android apps. I, yeah. I love my particular Android app. Can I run my Android app? I mean, BlackBerry's running into the same thing. Sure. Uh, so that is a that is an interesting part of this is is how to bridge that gap and get people to be willing to switch because you give them Android apps, but not have them just stay in the Android ecosystem and never adopt your own ecosystem. And I think that's that's why it's important for them to partner with Intex to create this Sailfish India ecosystem because even though Intex is going to be helping their competitors here, if they can get other manufacturers to get on board, then you start making that developer ecosystem more sustainable. Yeah, yeah. We get a lot of stuff from our subreddit. Uh, several stories you've heard of already today came as suggestions in our dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com subreddit. So if you haven't jumped in there and looked around, please do so, and please do some voting. Even if you don't feel like submitting uh, articles, which you can do as well, vote on the ones you think will be interesting before the show. I mean, vote 24 hours a day, but before the show, we will look at that, and we will actually you know, make some calls based on that. Reuters says Amazon customers Customers ordered 34.4 million items during Amazon Prime Day. The sale broke records set by last year's Black Friday sale on Amazon. Yet, Abichuela Condolce sent us the Time.com article noting that many Twitter users weren't impressed. Example Twitter posts included one huge troll by Amazon and Amazon's Garage Day sale <laughs> and when I die, I want whoever was responsible for hashtag Prime Day to lower me down into my grave so I can be let down one more time. <laughs> At least that's creative. Uh, yeah, it was pretty creative. <laughs> There's nothing in logic that says you can't make trolley comments on Twitter while ordering a cheap Chromebook or router from Amazon Prime Day sale. Evidence seems to indicate this may have happened more than once. You know, I think one of the mistakes they made was the at least the earliest stuff I could see was really garage sale. I went in and I was, you know, we were looking for a, a small TV for the kitchen. I thought, ah, let's go check it out on Prime Day. And I went into TV and there were seven items. So I clicked on, oh, coming soon because they were spacing out throughout the day. It was the same seven items, none of which were TVs. <laughs> and they, they were like little component stuff, but not even like uh -huh. good things. Accessory I mean, I, type stuff, yeah. There was a fire stick in there was a nice price, but that was about it. So you know what? I didn't go back. So maybe things got better. Yeah, and one wonders if it, if it changed up. I, my problem with these kinds of sales, not just yesterday, but Black Friday sales or Singles Day sales, is that you really have to work harder than you need to to find the thing that you want that you would have bought anyway for a cheaper price. Like and I don't, I, I don't think the opportunity cost usually works out. Maybe it does sometimes. I don't know. Probably true of most sales. 
Yeah. Well, some joker named S.P. Sheridan noted the Engadget article, the last Starfighter writer, Jonathan Betchwell, is developing a TV series called The Starfighter Chronicles with added VR content. The series will be about alien law enforcement, but certain scenes will have more to them if you're viewing in a VR headset. Betchwell is working with folks at Surreal TV and hoping to get someone to pick up the project either for network or streaming. Yeah, I got really excited about this article until I got to the point where he hadn't got a distribution deal yet. Uh, <laughs> But maybe he still will, and I, and I love the idea not only of something in the last Star, Starfighter universe, but also something that has a little virtuality, virtual reality hook like this. I think that's cool. Yeah, it should be fun. And people should note that she called S.P. Sheridan a joker, not because she hates our audience, because that's her husband. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's quite the opposite.